I'm Dave Palumbo, founder of Species Nutrition. I created Species Nutrition with one mission in mind, to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work and are backed by science. From my earliest bodybuilding days, I believed in only putting the best in my body. And that lives on in the Species Nutrition line of products. We use only top-of-the-line formulations dosed for maximum results and the best flavoring systems available. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Hello, I'm Brian Dobson, owner of Metroplex Gym, the original home of hardcore training. This pandemic has nearly crippled the fitness industry we all so dearly love. With Metroplex Gyms now opening up all across the country, it's our turn to hit back. If your health was ever a priority, now's the time. Now's the time to stop feeding your fear and your anxieties and feed your desire to get back on the saddle. For desire is the starting point of all achievement. For those who feel uncertain for what the future will hold, I'm here to assure you Metroflex Gym will continue to provide a platform for bodybuilding and strength condition athletes all across the nation. This optimism extends to potential owners looking to venture into owning and operating a Metroflex Gym. With interest rates at an all-time low, you can open up your own Metroflex Gym for the price of a new car. Our Metroflex Gyms are back in business. We're now waiting for you to do the same. Stay hardcore, y'all. God bless. Here's one for you. I'm not sure if this has come up too much in the last six or seven years with your Q&As and everything like that, but I remember back, I'm going to guess a year, somewhere between 2009 and 2011, a lot of people might know, not remember you or where they were not fans at the time. You went out to, I think it was Arizona and did ayahuasca yeah. long before anyone else ever did ayahuasca. <laughs> right. So my question for you is with that is, in hindsight now, 10 years back, was it a life-changing experience? Do you think it changed your trajectory at all? And um, would you recommend it for other people or do you have a different perspective than people that just say everyone should do it? I did it actually two times. And the first time I did it was in, in New York at a yoga studio in the city. And it was very hot in the yoga studio. <laughs> and it, the environment wasn't great for it, but it was a shaman who came and did it. And it, it, was, it was like... Um, it definitely was, it was a little scary because I had never done it before. And, and one of the things that a lot of people do when they do this is they throw up, okay, during the thing. And it's not that the ayahuasca makes you nauseous, it's that the experience, like if you have a lot of stuff to purge from your, 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 your emotional you know, centers, uh, it'll cause you to throw up. And because it's what's happening is you're, you're kind of losing your, your um, you still can control yourself, but a lot, your subconscious is taking over a lot of what's going on. So subconsciously, a lot of people have a lot of baggage they have to get rid of, and, and it causes them to throw up. Um, I was petrified that I was gonna, <laughs> I was going to be throwing up all over because I don't like to, that nauseous feeling. I don't like to throw up. Lot, both times I did it, I didn't I didn't throw up. I think I might have dry heaved a couple of times. I never threw up, thank God. But 
that was but anyway this so this yoga suit it was it was so hot in here that that what happened was the first part was pretty good and then I, I i couldn't take it in in the room it was too small there was a lot of people in there so i sort of i walked out into the main part of the yoga studio and it was we were literally in a, in an, uh, a building in manhattan that had to be about 10 stories high okay with these big glass open windows so i'm looking out the windows and i'm like in, i've got the ayahuasca going on and usually <laughs> it's the shaman that directs you know the the journey you take spiritually um and if they chanting and they're and they're doing this and that's what really sets the stuff off so when you're not in that when you're in that environment it's like super intensifies the whole the whole the whole trip you're on so to speak you know when you're not, it, it changes it. So when I left the, the room where the guy was doing the music and all that stuff, it changed my experience. And what it, it was, was I was like little vignettes. Like all of a sudden, first you feel pretty good. You're kind of like, you're not drunk. You're, something's not right. You know, you're a little off and things are a little distorted, almost like uh, if you were like on a mushroom trip a little bit, but not really. And then all of a sudden you'll you'll experience you'll have a, like a, a, an episode of something. And as I'm staring at this window, looking down, I re my grandfather, my father's father had had was a bricklayer. He ran jobs and building half the buildings in Manhattan and, and, and the, the five boroughs. And they were finishing a job. I think it was in the Bronx. And they were just finishing the roof up. And the they were ready to celebrate. It was a big job. They made a lot of money on it. The building collapsed because the cement was defective, and every I think like there was like ten or twelve workers up there. Everyone died except my, including my my father's grandfather. But my father's father somehow, luckily, when he fell, a bathtub fell on top of him and shielded him from the whole building, you know, crushing him basically, and he and he lived. I relived the fall. I actually had a flashback that I was falling and that he was talking to me and telling me you know, why he, he survived it, because he had to survive because of his family and because of his, uh, and, and he couldn't allow his family to, do, and, and it, was, it, was a, it was a crazy, crazy sequence. I was like crying, tears were coming out of my eyes. I couldn't control myself. It wasn't like I was actively thinking about it. It just happened. And that's what ayahuasca does. It kind of frees your, it takes away all the controls, especially if you're a control freak like I am. It takes away those controls and it allows your subconscious mind to come through and, and reveal messages to you, the things that you don't want to you don't want to acknowledge about yourself that we suppress. You know all those all those emotions that we bury with bodybuilding and muscling ourselves up, and that's what it does. And that, when I realized that it was, it was, I realized it was it was a cool experience. And there were other little episodes like that too that I went through. I didn't do it again. And then I'm in California covering, believe it or not, the Flex show, and that was you're right. That was the weekend I had gone to uh, Sedona in. Um, in, in Arizona, and then I flew, I, I think I flew to California, and then for the, I think it was that, I think it was 2011, for the Flex, they had a Flex magazine show, and I was supposed to go to the night show after the pre-judging, and then someone called me up and they said, I, you want to do, do ayahuasca? I said, when? They're like, tonight. I said, I got, I got to cover a show, and I had staff there. I'm like, you know what, screw it. I told my staff, you covered the show, and I drove like two hours with them up the coast, and we went and did it. When we got there, we were late. There was this huge mansion. The thing had to be worth 20 million bucks, this place. And they had, whoever owned it was allowing them to use it for this ayahuasca ceremony. There had to be at least 50 people in there. And it was a completely different experience than I had the last time. Once again, they had the, a shaman there, but they had the place set up like it was like, like a Greek temple. And everyone had like sleeping bags and, 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 and you know, pillows to lay on. And all the, they had helpers there. They always have helpers, you know, because to help guide you. Because in case some people have freak out and they, and they lose their mind. And because they, they can't handle the emotional experience. And these people were dressed as angels. They were in white. So when I started to do the ayahuasca, I, you know, and you start, it, it, it's uncomfortable at first. Because, and, and, and these, pe these women come over and they're all dressed in white. You actually think you're in heaven. It, it, was, it was a crazy environment. They obviously knew what they were doing. It was a much great, better experience I had there. And once again, you know, I don't even remember all the things that came up for me, but, the, but a lot of, like, it's a lot of just, a, you're venting emotional baggage and, and, and coming to conclusions like, oh, that's why that happened. And this is why this happened. Oh, I see the symbolism. All these things in your life start to, like, kind of fit together. Like, oh, now I know why I met this person. That, it was one of those things. It, it, at the end of the experience, it's so emotionally draining. 
it's not like a you go to a healthy. It's not like you go to a nightclub and you're doing it, you know, ecstasy and, and having a great time. It's it's draining. It, it's so draining that when I when I <laughs> when I started when because after about two and a, two three hours it wears off, and when it wears off you're completely normal. There's no like hangover effect. Nothing. I was starving to death. I was so hungry, and I said, for some reason I came out of it before some of these other people did. I'm like, you guys got any food? <laughs> got any food here? This is where I was still pretty big too. Have you guys got any food? They're like, oh, we have a whole. They had, I guess, everyone had brought stuff. They had so much food there because remember this was a mansion. Someone obviously financed this whole thing. There was so much food there. I was like, you would th- would have thought that I hadn't eaten in, in in ten weeks. You know, the way I was I was devouring all this food, and everyone's like, how are you eating? You know, no one no one else is eating because they tell you not to eat before the ceremony because it could, could inhibit. You know, you don't absorb the ayahuasca as well. So I hadn't eaten for like six hours. I was starving to death. You know, and but it was it was it was a very good, I, I know it was a long winded answer, but it was I wanted you to get a, a taste of what the experience was like. It was it was good, but you know what? When I after I finished that that one, I said I'll I'll probably never do it again. And the reason why I said that was because I got everything out. I felt like all right, everything's out. I, I felt I felt like I dealt with everything, and for some reason I had a, a complete feeling inside. Like okay, you don't need to do this anymore. And that I, I don't know why. I don't know. Maybe some people have a lot more work to do than others. And I don't know. Maybe if I did do it again, I, I might experience something. But I felt like I my my job was done. Whatever I needed to go do it for was was complete at that point. All right, no, that was good. That 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 was super helpful. Uh, let's move we'll transition right into another one here. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about species on this one. As someone that started their own company with my Vava stuff, I had different colors in mind. I had different names in mind. And then as you start on path, sometimes things change. So, did with species? Did you know you were going to name it species? Why did you name it species? Yeah. Did you plan to name it, having it green like? What, what about it is either the way you thought it would be or wasn't going to be? Like, tell right. me just a little bit of the story of that. Okay. You know, I, I had 6,000 names picked out. Um, I was going through a million names, and, and I would ask people what they thought, and everyone was like, eh. And, you know, they were, they were the, the you know, typical names, like, that you would come up with. I think I, even had, I think I even had the word infinite at one point. I know there's infinite labs now, but this was before they ever did it. I thought about that. I had all these different names, and they just nothing was really resonating with me. And I said, you know, Bonnie builders are—we're really a different species. I mean, we're, we don't look like regular human beings. I said, what if I called it species? Now, I—I I always loved that movie Species. I don't know if you've seen the movie with Natasha Henstridge. Yeah, I mean, she's—you yeah. know—she was like that. Everyone was in love with her when that movie came out. And I said, you know that, and I that reminded me because it was a different species. I said, we're kind of like a different species like that. So I actually asked Jerry Beck if he could design a logo for me. He goes, well, you know what? I, I, I have a friend who does logos. So he put me in touch with a friend of his and he made a logo that looked like the species logo from the movie almost. And I said, you know what? This is pretty hardcore. You know, I wanted to make it a hardcore line at the time because I was hardcore and I wanted to be stand out. And I, and I, and I always like the, I always am, Something with Charles Darwin always resonated with me, evolution, and I said, but I'm going to call it, rather than call it species nutrition, I'm going to call it evolutionary nutrition, because it's, you know, it's like an evolving, we're an evolving species uh, in in bodybuilding, because we're constantly changing the way we look and all that stuff, and and that's where the whole idea came from, and I played off of that, and so the green was basically something that the guy who did the logo for me put in there, probably because he copied it from the movie, in a sense, and I thought it just worked. So I said, all right, well, green. So when I came out with everything originally, all the bottles were clear because I wanted to, I wanted to have be completely transparent. That was always my goal with species. I'm not hiding anything. Here's the dosages. Here's the formulas. I'm not anything special. I'm just using the highest quality ingredients and I'm telling you what's in there so that you know that I'm not trying to bamboozle you. I don't, because you know what the truth is? I could tell everyone all my formulas. No one would make the products because they're too expensive. Because people are too worried about profits, and rather than providing good quality products, and that I knew that was always the case. You know, th- these car companies can make a Ferrari. You don't think that Ford can make a Ferrari if they want to? Of course they can. They don't want to spend the money because they don't think anyone will buy it, and they're probably right. They probably sell a lot more cars because they're more reasonably priced. But I wanted to be the, the you know the Ferrari of, of supplements. So um, I everything was clear, so you can see all the pills. The problem with the protein powders, people liked it because it, like, it kind of looked cool. You can see your protein powder, the colors and all that, is that when you fill a protein jug, it settles. So 
when it's first filled, it's filled up to the top. By the time it hits the shelves in the store, it looks like the, 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 the protein tubs are half full. And it, it, that's just the way it goes. That's how, you know, protein is fluffy and, it, and it, over time it settles. It's still the same weight. It, you're not losing anything. It, so it looks like, on the shelves, it looked kind of like the, the, the containers were empty. So I said, you know what? I wonder if I could make a green. Remember, this is back, you know, you know, a while ago. This is what, 07 or something like that? So we didn't have shrink wraps or anything like that. There was just labels. So I said, I wonder if I could get a green tub. And so I contacted a custom blow molding company and I said, can you make me a green tub? And they sent me some samples and I saw this like, once again, it was my color. It was my species alien green color in a tub, but it was, you can see through it a little bit. So you still could see the powder, but it wasn't completely see through, it was green. And they were expensive, the tubs. I'm like, you know what, I gotta use these tubs. So that's what we first started using. I mean, after I went from the clear, I went to that and people loved those tubs but they were really expensive and, and everything, every time you needed a new size tub for another product, you needed to make a custom thing. I, it, was too, it was costing me too much. And then, then they would make me inventory the stuff because it's, no one else used it. So at about that time, shrink wraps were available. So I was able, so someone, someone said to me, one of the, my uh, designers said, why don't we just shrink wrap a regular white container? It'll still have the same look and you know what I mean? You can, it's going to be a lot cheaper to get the containers, and but yet you'll have the same look you're looking for. So we redesigned the whole look of species label, and we made the new one, because I believe that I, I definitely believe that the if you're going to sell a high end product, it has to look high end, and it has to you know it's got to sh stand off the shelves. And I noticed after I did green, a lot of a few other companies kind of followed suit and tried to copy with that green too. I don't know if they were copying me. Maybe they just thought it looked you know impressive, but. Um, that's that's always been you know alien green that's been my color and and it just it kind of stuck and I thought it was unique and you know when you see my product on your shelf you you know what it is when you see it you know oh yeah absolutely uh, one follow up on it maybe none of them were that challenging but as someone that's worked in supplements here for a while is, is there any particular product either in the line or that once was that might surprise people that would like hey you may think this was easy to do but this was a royal pain in the ass to like put together like is there one of them that was way more challenging than you ever thought it would be to put together. Well, the, um, you know, Amino Evolved is a tough product. I'll tell you why, because the amino acids are all fermented. So you, you don't just call up one, one, you know, amino acid distributor and say, send me this. You got to sort, my people have to source them from all. But luckily, I had very good people working for me. I, I never did any of the sourcing myself. I never had to. But it was difficult for them to get all the, all the fermented aminos uh, in that product. That was a, a much more difficult product than I thought was going to be, uh, be made. My fat burner, believe it or not, was tough because I, I had to test it to make sure it worked. And the same thing with Testalyze. You know, Testalyze, I must have done a hundred different renditions of it. And I kept running blood work on myself to see until the hormone levels changed properly. So. I mean, I have now, you know, when I originally made Testalyze, I put a warning on the label for, that it wasn't for women, it was just for men. I didn't even realize that the application to women, I'm actually changing the label now. I have a lot of women using the product because what it does is it blocks DHT production. And a lot of women produce too much DHT. It causes them to get hair growth on their face, even women that don't take steroids. Remember, women produce adrenal androgens from their adrenal glands, DHEA, and that converts to testosterone. And in women that are prone, just like men, some women convert their testosterone into DHT at very high amounts, and it causes them to get hair thinning, causes them to get acne on their face or, or hair growth. Testalyze stops that. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many teenagers take Testalyze because they have bad acne. And all it is is high DHT levels, you know. So we use a very, very highly refined form of salt palmetto in there that you just can't buy anywhere. And it's expensive, but it works. It's, it's a really good DHT blocker. And so that product was tough because I had to find out the right amounts to put in there to get the levels that you'd want. Um, same, like I, I use indole 3 carbonyl and um, diindole methane, which is an estrogen reset, excuse me, which is an estrogen binder. So it binds estrogen, pulls it out of the body. Um, I wanted to put enough in there to get to bring estrogen down to low normal levels, but I didn't want it to, I don't want to bottom out estrogen as well. So I had to play around with all these different ingredients until we got the, 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 the formula right. 
Um, I know it's right because it's the product sells incredibly good and we get a lot of great reviews on Amazon. And I have people, I had an 86 year old guy contact me the other day. He goes, Dave, you know, I have a pretty high testosterone for 86. I said, what is it? He goes, it's like 400. I said, yeah, that's really good. I said for 86. <laughs> He's like, yeah, but I took Testalyze. You know what it is now? I said, no, what? He goes, 850. I said, eight, it doubled his testosterone and it lowered his DHT, which he was having prostate problems with. And the doctor was thrilled when he saw that the DHT is now in normal range. So the, that was a tough product just because, you know, number one, I had to apply science to it because I wanted to make sure that it was, you know, I, don't, I never believed in these testosterone boosting products. I believed in tweaking the, the ratios of testosterone to DHT to estrogen. That's the way to raise testosterone because if estrogen is too high, it naturally suppresses your testosterone. And likewise, if you're converting too much testosterone into estrogen and DHT, you're going to lower testosterone. So that was a tough product just because of getting the right amounts. And, you know, I probably drove the manufacturer. I think they wanted to fire me at one point. And I said, are you guys firing me? He's like, I, I, he goes, I can't send you another sample. I said, well, do you want me to pay for it? I said, I'm going to order the product for me. I said, I got to get the formula right. He's like, Dave, most companies, I just give them a product and they, and they make it. I said, that's why, that's why most companies' products don't work, I said. I said, this is called science. I said, there's, there's, there's a, I'm not going to put a product out that's just another Me Too product. I'm putting products out that do something. I don't sell a pre-workout because you know why? I'm not going to sell enough of it because I can't make something better than what's out there already. Everyone puts the same stuff in it. And, you know, at some point I might just do it because, you know, if, if, if in other words, if I had a, one of my distributors in Europe said I need a pre-workout, I might just make one just for them. But I'm not putting it out just to put out something that, that, that everyone else has. When I had a pre-workout out, I had a, actually had a stimulant-free one that was really good. And people loved it. It just it didn't sell as well because people want to be stimmed out of their mind. So, you know, if I'm going to put out a stim product, I'll just put out an energy drink. That's what I wanted to do. But uh, energy drinks, unfortunately, are very, very expensive to ship because they're heavy. Um, the fact that uh, Jack Owak does so great with Bang, I, I take my hat off to him because he, he really entered the market against some heavy hitters with Monster and Rockstar. And you know what? He's hitting it out of the ballpark. Pepsi and him signed a, um, uh, a distribution rights. You know, Pepsi is now distributing Bang, believe it or not. And I'm sure that's a huge deal that Jack uh, came up with them. And, you know, he, he beat those guys at their own game. Not many people can do that. Yeah, no, that's that's high risk, high reward right there. You can get crushed real quick. Absolutely. Speaking, that's actually a perfect segue into my next question for you. And I think this will be helpful for people during all this pandemic. And then, you know, you got a YouTube channel, but you know, you sometimes talk to people about, hey, you know, you can start your own YouTube channel. You can make it work. Like you, you try to help people with, you know, opening, broadening the horizon. So my question to you is, because I've been following you for a long time since, you know, you left MD and started RX and it was super small. And for people that don't know, there wasn't always a YouTube channel. And it was a really, you were doing website stuff and content before everybody else. So my question for you is, and, and as you went through this, this process over 20 years, A, were you ever scared? Did you almost ever give up on it? Like, what, like were there ever some times where you're like, holy shit, I might quit on this. Like, it's not going to work. Like, tell me about that whole process. There, I, I never, I never, I don't believe in quitting, you know, in, until I'm ready to quit. In other words, when I, when I leave something, it's because I've, I've, I've mastered it. <laughs> I don't leave yeah. like in the middle because I failed. I don't, I, I don't believe in failure, you know. So I, there were some months with RX Muscle in the beginning that I, w I was like saying, we need an advertiser. I said, I need someone. I, I was like, make, I was praying that I was conjuring the money and it, and it always came. It always came. It always arrived in perfect timing. Like, I mean, like, I'm not going to make it next month if I don't get a new advertiser. The next day, email, hey, uh, how much do you charge for advertising? Well, I'm, I think the person's going to want to spend 500 bucks. They're like, no, I want the whole, I want the skin of the whole front page for three months. And I'm like, you know, 15,000 15, a month. You know, it, it was like, it was like a miracle almost. But I, I believe that we create our own reality anyway. So my thoughts were so strong and I was so immersed in what I was doing that I, I, I couldn't fail. I don't believe you can fail if you immerse yourself in something and, and just, and just, believe that you that, that there's no way you can fail because I, because I knew that no one could outwork me when I when I put my mind to something you could ask my wife she thinks I'm out of my mind I said she's like it, there's almost something wrong with you when you do that that I, I could get into something so deeply that like that there's nothing I don't even hear what's going on around me there could be bombs going off and, and bullets being fired and I wouldn't even hear it because I'm so immersed in, in what I'm doing whether it be editing video or or, or researching something or 
or if someone like challenges me on, uh, on like YouTube or says something and I have to like, you know, cr come back with an argument, you know, that, that, that's the only thing that, that I can focus on. So I knew there was no chance of failure because I knew that, and, and my main competition was Blackman at the time who I used to work for at MD. I, I knew that they couldn't outwork me over there because I knew that they had a lot of superstars over there, but no one wanted to work. They were just cashing their paychecks. So I knew that that wasn't even an issue. My only issue was to stay in business. And I, and I said this, you know, during the 2011, 12, so everyone was starting their own supplement company, you know, and, I, and it, was, it was a tough time for supplements because you were, you were competing against too many people. And I said, you know what? I said, all my workers, I said, as long as we survive and we make it through, even if we're even if they're, we're not making a ton of money during this time, we don't grow. We'll emerge, okay, victorious at the end of the day because people will say, you know what, this company stand stood their their their, their ground. They never dumbed down their products. You know, same thing with RX Muscle. They always were there. It was a, it was no matter how depressed we were, we always tuned into Heavy Muscle Radio every week. I never missed. I haven't missed a radio show ever since I even when I was with MD. We had the Noble Radio from 2006 to to today. How long is that? Was that uh, 20, what is that, 16 years? I have never missed a, a single week on a radio show. So that's, people want regularity. They want someone they can depend on. And when they find that person, they latch on to it. I know I'm that way. I like someone who's dependable and that I can say, okay, you know, every week he's going to be there. It's like a friend. You know your friend's never going to leave you. I'm never going to desert these people. They're going to be there and they're going to listen to me complaining whether it's because I had shoulder surgery or... I, something bad happened or someone died or I'm always there to kind of like, you know, be the voice of, uh, uh, of to talk about the, the subject. And I think that's important. If you're going to be good at anything you do and successful, you got to be willing to go to that place where, you know, where you, know, you, you don't leave any stone unturned. I think people give up too easy. You know, my wife yep. says, oh, you just get bored with things and you quit. I say, yeah, but I'm quitting But when I'm on top. I don't quit when I'm on the bottom. <laughs> I might play out a scenario and then say, you know what? I really want to move on to something more intellectually challenging and more creatively challenging. And I might shift gears or move away from something. But it doesn't mean I've quit it. It just means that I've mastered it already and I don't need to do any more. I was the master of contest coverage well before there was NPC News and all these people. They didn't even have a website. I had a network of, of, of photographers all over the world that were turning pictures into me, and we were we were the contest database to go to for probably two or three years. Um, and when BSN was when when Brendan Ahern, who owns Ronnie Coleman Signature Series, was working for BSN, they were spending big money with us every month to sponsor our contest coverage. So I was I was at a show every single weekend, and I had other photographers at other shows. We were covering sometimes six shows in one weekend. So that was a lot of work. And it really, you know, while we were making money for it, it was worth it. But once the advertising dollars kind of dried up because the supplement companies kind of weren't doing well for a couple of, you know, a few years in there, I just said, I'm not doing contest coverage anymore. I already did it the best. I don't have to prove anything anymore. I want to focus on TV programming, which was what I always wanted to focus on. And it just, the technology just started coming about. And that's when we bought our TV box and we started doing live streaming TV from our studio that we built in New York that John Romano built for me. And no one was doing it back then. No one was doing a TV show at that point. And we did the first one. And that was always what I wanted to do. And that's what led to, obviously, then the YouTube boom came around. But, and now everyone's got a, you know, anyone who could, anyone who could hold the phone up to their face has got a channel now. But, but that was, you know, we, we pioneered that. And that was important to me because I knew that that was going to be the future of bodybuilding coverage. It wasn't going to be the magazines. It wasn't going to be going to a contest and interviewing every single person who, who did the show, which is what I was doing. Now it was going to be about who can create original programming. So I wanted to do original programming in bodybuilding like shows, like TV shows, debate shows, stuff like that. Whereas other people's YouTube channels are basically reporting on what's going on in the industry or maybe pointing out phonies in the industry. Everyone's got their own angle. You've got to find your own niche, okay, and exploit that niche. My niche was just being, was creative original content. And that's, and that's what we're doing to this day. All right. No, that was good. Final question for you here. This is a question actually about me for you. I want to get your okay. opinion. I appreciate this. You, you've, you've mentioned to many people and these as people listen to these videos that I'm kind of crazy. I might even have a borderline eating disorder. Like I'm not afraid to start <laughs> on that. I stay pretty trim naturally, but it's just through natural starvation. So my newest theory is I've been doing this for three weeks. 
is um, I decided I don't want to eat anymore. So I, I just basically blend all my food up in the morning. Yeah. And it's basically a 25 gram shake, quarter cup of oats. Um, I throw some mac oil in there with some chia seeds and some almond milk, 10 ounces. I make four of them and I, I basically just drink all my, I just drink my foods. Right. And at the end of the day, around seven o'clock, I have my, I have one real meal a day. My right. thought process is if I'm drinking everything, my digestive system really doesn't work as much. I have extra energy um, to use for other things in life. And I'm probably able to detox my body a lot more. And I've, I feel like I've really responded to that. I think even my skin's thinner. What are your impressions on someone doing like that? Does that sound crazy or does there sound like some logic to it? I, I think the problem with it, I think in theory it sounds right on paper, but I think the problem with it is that our digestive tracts are meant to digest food and to work. And I think what you're doing is you're making, a, you're, you're making your digestive system lazy, okay? Um, I know it sounds weird, but I, I, I think that it's like not training your muscles. It's like you're, it's like walking around with crutches all day long. You're not, your, your legs are not getting enough of a workout. Now that doesn't mean you should be eating eight food meals a day because that might overwork your intestines and cause them to get bigger, which is I think what happens with, you know, I think that happened to me. I think my intestinal tract grew because I was putting so much food into it on a regular basis that it needed to get stronger and bigger. And so that, I think that's what really causes the organ growth which obviously will, will shrink up when you stop eating as much food, which is evidenced by the fact that I have no, you know, no waste anymore. So, um, but the point is I think that, you're, I think that you're, you're not allowing your body to do what it normally should do. And, you know, and you know, I know you probably take your fiber supplement you know, twice a day, which is good because that does work the colon a little bit. But I, I don't know, I, I think that what you're doing is probably good for short periods of time, but I think on a, on a long-term basis, I think, it's a little too, I think it's a little too neurotic dare I say, and I don't, I don't necessarily think it's better for you. Bad. That means it's real bad. <laughs> because you know, I think also when foods are too, are too easily digested, I think sometimes you don't absorb them as well. I used to, I used to, here's a good example. I used to drink eggs. I would take 12 eggs and, and blend them up. And I'm not talking about my crazy shakes I did. I'm talking about, I would take 12 whole eggs, blend it in a blender, put a couple packets of Splendor in it and drink it down. Okay. That's, how many grams of that? Six times 12 is what? 80, almost 84 grams of protein right there. Probably around three, about 36, maybe almost 40 grams of fat, right? It was, it's like a perfect ketogenic meal, if you think about it, right? For, for a 300 pound bodybuilder. But I don't think that I absorbed half of that. I think I, I, think I pooped it out. I, I don't know. I think it went through me too fast. I think that there's something to the fact that when food has to be digested, it takes longer to go through the intestinal tract and you absorb the food better than when it, it scoots through too quickly. And that's my theory. I've just noticed it on my body. I don't gain weight as, as well when I'm eating all, drinking all shakes as I do when I'm eating food meals interspersed with shakes. No, I appreciate that because you may be right with that. It's my, I'll probably do some sort of staggering or maybe I eat at 10 and eat at 7 and then yeah. shakes in between. Or maybe four days a week, I do my shake thing or five, but yeah. there's a, you got to mix it up. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. I thought of it that way. I actually was going to, because obviously I sent you product. I was going to get, I was, I don't take tons of omegas, but I was like, maybe I'll take the omega lies and other stuff because I'm not eating food. Yeah, you need, like, definitely need stuff. Definitely yeah, should. you take the mineralized because I recognize it's like, well, I don't get enough nutrients in right. other ways. I recognize yeah, that. Yeah, we'll send so. you a package. Let us know yeah. what you need. We'll send yeah, it Yeah, no, we'll definitely do that. Uh, well, that's going to be it for, the, uh, for this week on my end, Dave. You got any closing remarks for everybody? Uh, guys, uh, stay safe. Uh, wear your masks, even though I know it sounds ridiculous, but uh, this, this thing is not going away anytime soon. And I think that it's important that, you know, people – uh, not take this too lightly. You know, I'm a big conspiracy theory guy, and I, whatever the reason why this thing is out there, it doesn't matter. It is out there, and, and it is real, and there are people that are getting really sick from it, and you don't really want to be the person that gets it and then winds up in the hospital. Even though most people don't, are symptomless, you don't know how your body's going to respond to this thing. So it's silly to be irresponsible about it, and I know you, <laughs> but. It's happening. People are catching it, especially here in Florida. We know it's, it's, it's by leaps and bounds it's going up. So, you know, I just want to remind people, don't, you can go to the gym, but be mindful of putting your hands in your face and that kind of stuff. Got it. And that's it. Until next time, thanks for checking it out. Anthony Risqually closing us out. Take care.